listening, welcome forward to Reasonings right here at the Trail Life. I'm your host, the great Owl, in the presence of my co-host, Brother Raman Singh. Perfect, Perfect love. love. Perfect, Perfect love. love. So, uh, after we started 2022 on um, the Attributes of Love series, we've gone into a uh, dichotomy of the herd's heritage and history and some of the history of you know, some of the religious practices. And so, I think our theme you know, for the year is drawing on a lot of information about um, the current um, topics that we're, we're um, discussing and the kind of offerings that we're presenting. We are going heavily into more functional information. That was our drive for this year. And so love was the best start. And so now through clearing up all our fears and our phobias, our misconceptions, our improper discipline, and starting to know consciously examine information. And so we went through the great earthquake. We went through um, you know, some of the Earth's early history as well, in a sense, and we came through atheism as well. And we started looking at the, the famine that is prophesied in the book of prophecies in the, the book of Revelations. And seeing that the current times as a change between the age of, as I said, Pisces and Aquarius, that there is true polar shifts, environmental changes, and also the acts of the hand of God upon earth. So this current offering you now, since we've been through that and we're encompassing the functionality of being present, we're talking about living in the end times. Because I know old-fashioned view of the end times is it's the end of the world. But what we've come to understand through studying the text, it's the end of the age. Hey. And the end of the age of this system of the Antichrist rising and reaching its most apex predatory point and then crashing most miserably into annihilation, then we'll start a thousand years of the reign of the Amashiach, of his principle, his, his way of life, and him being our God and King, hallelujah, over us, right? And so, when we're saying living in the end times, we're talking about moving between the age that is this dark age into the age of light that is upon us, and the ways in which we are going to usher in by our function, a godlike state of being here on earth to welcome the Most High who says we have to be clean, spotless and without blemish else if, well, he won't receive us, right? So ultimately this about living in the end times is about strategies and survival. So Brother Singh, throwing the argument over to you, living in the end times, what strategies for survival are you employing in these end times? Yeah, man, so myself, my family and I, mm -hmm. we are preparing because we are looking to move into our farmland, family farmland, mm -hmm. left by my grandfather. So times are shifting because right now I live closer to the main road and the main city in the rural area, but <clears throat> it's get it's, it's, it's time that we have to get like a deeper inside now, you know, as the Bible says, head to the mountains, you know. If, if you know that the enemy is coming, mm -hmm. you have to just head to the mountains, head to the hills, get ourselves a sustainable life, you know, don't depend on the system that much. Because certain things like evil tissue, you, mm -hmm. you know, said Jano, that essential. Mm -hmm. But if it come to it, mm -hmm. we have to go find other ways, like what our ancient ancestors used to use before tissue was invented. We have to find back the soft bush and the loofah <laughs> sponges that naturally come from nature. Okay, true. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. We are in the times, the end times of what the Bible said now, mm -hmm. it shall be like Noah, in the days of Noah. And it said the, the earthquakes, mm -hmm. wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, viruses, you know, famines, mm -hmm. you know, great 
what they call it, great suffering. What they call it, great tribulations, right? Yes, I. So it's coming. Or it's here to a degree, as what we're saying. Yes, I. Or, yeah, it's, it's here. It might not be at its highest level, at the apex yet, of its predatory nature, but it's certainly growing towards that. Yeah, man. I don't know. We have to prepare ourselves. Don't be like Babylon. We have to get out of her mentally and Hallelujah. spiritually first. Yes. Then we can shift to the physically, if possible. Yes. Because we don't say everybody if you just run to the mountain, run to the... If you can, and you can do it, do it. And if you see so it's going to benefit your life, do it. Absolutely. <laughs> but if you can't, and you're stuck in a Babylon, well, who is we if you say anything, you know? We just have to know so you have to start mentally and spiritually to get out of her. Leave Babylon distraction and pleasures alone. Turn to the Mosai and the righteous ways of living. So the end times, we cannot be like the people in Noah time, mm -hmm. living like them. A whole heap of abominations. Hallelujah. Evil on the mind continually. You know, loss on the mind continually. You remember Saddam and Gomorrah? Mm -hmm. The people, mm -hmm. the, the city was so... Decadent. Evil, you know, yes. there's no good in it, yes. as the most I say. The, the most I say, boy, if you find 10 good people in it, yes, me save it, man. S 10 righteous, me save a city for 10 righteous, yes, me save it. So, God said, Show me 10 of them, <laughs> you will never find 10 of them. A only lot, yes, was the only one. I will not even know if I'm truly righteous like that. Yes. Because I'm a live in, a, in, in a the bug. city. Yeah, yeah, but through him the bloodline with Abraham, the most I save him, because of him plan. Yes. And you don't know him could have been the one righteous in the city who actually think godly. Yes. You know? And, and it, in a sense, he would have been swallowed up by the environment around him. Because if it's really Babylon, him, you know, yeah, and him is an Israelite in an Edomite life and culture, True. you are going to be surrounded by their practices and it's going to seep into you. And for us here, we're still in that Babylon culture. That True. most thing of spirituality is speaking towards awakening. Awakening because it is already a suggestive premise that we are asleep because we don't know, right? So most times, we as Israelites don't even know that we are Israel. We don't even know that we are the heritage of Adam. We don't even know we are the heritage of Noah. We don't know that we are the heritage of Abraham. So most times, we don't know this, and we are living the Edomite, the Esau generation, the Babylon culture, which is a very deeply material culture that is spiritless and soulless. Because people sometimes want to know the differences, thesis and antithesis, right? Antithesis and thesis. Thesis is coming from the theistic view of life, which is a God-centered view of life. Actuality broken down into the understanding of man. Theology, right? Theology, people, right? So antithesis, this, this antithetical experience of, oh, there is no God. Everything is a mathematical calculus. It's an aromatic calculus. No, it's not. That is a premise, an idea, and what is actual. Actuality don't always align with a premise, with an idea. But the theistic mind, all of the premises were on actuality. So we as Israel living a God-centered life, a life that was in sync with the old heavenly bodies, the seasons, the movement of the heavenly bodies, the heavenly beings, right? This was our culture, what we spoke, our system of writing, the codification of the words and symbols, mathematics, the linguistics, the emotional, 
our we don't say overstanding because I don't say understanding but you know it goes our overstanding of reality was collective and that collective was transposed as every living being as you're born into the village into the community not just into the family but into the village into the community meaning that our identity is to the greater and not to the singular versus Edomite culture whose identity is to the singular and not to the greater that teaches us think the way you want to think do do as you want right so in babylon they're saying to you there's nothing wrong with the projections of human life to come there's absolutely nothing wrong with it all you need to do is be in the right telemetry of their calculations to say well economically what is your viability how are you going to be viable economically for the future are you going to be going into the cryptocurrency which we know crypto suggests is the cryptic as in the crypt which is dead dead speak like corporation the corp <laughs> the corporation dead speak that we are a living being but abstracting into ideology into the straw man is a, is a corporation right so people are living for the corporation status for the status the titles and the labels right so because they're living for the status for the title for the label for the labels they say well this is our outlook economically as long as i am in the right position of life i'm meeting with the right people i'm in the right echelon of life economically i'll be okay but they're not looking at the projections of the earth's resources right and the movement of the geospatial energy within the earth they're not look again looking at the essence of the scarcity of resources that is being artificially created as well as a part of fulfillment of prophecy so you've got both these things working together meaning that thinking that cryptocurrencies is going to get you there is a greater absurdity than the previous view that fiat currency was going to get you to security right because all value is in a gold box standard right and anything abstractly from a gold box standard which is an ounce of gold today will be an ounce of gold tomorrow even the value fluctuates it is still right so the fungibility of gold will remain right but there's no fungibility in in fiat currency right it changes it cannot store the same value and be up the same value 10 years two years three years down the road so anybody is thinking that okay i'm gonna put my livestock up and my life insurance policy i'm gonna put my money into crypto you're gonna regret that down the road whether you believe it or not, you're going to regret that down the road because we've got the EMP that's coming, we've got the blackouts that's coming, we've got all these things that's in the future that's coming that's going to render all of these sun technology and fossil fuel technology basically useless. <laughs> and it's already there. In some regard, people are already seeing that there are these hot flashes and these things that are causing power outages and stuff on the grid that cannot be explained by any human error or any hacking right so there there is theosophical events happening that is geospatial that is in the realms of god and anyone who knows the book of prophecies know that the bible told us that these things are going to happen so if you're planning just for the material sense well go ahead continue on that who am i to say don't but the end result is you reap what you sow right and it's not a benediction you reap what you sow it is a law of actuality it is a law of actuality so why so much people was offset in these so-called pandemics and without a sense of morality or self is because the sense of self was never rooted in God and it was never rooted in truth. It was rooted in what was acceptable, norm, supported, reinforced by their status, the titles they hold and the labels they carry. This was why, this is why, when all of it came crashing in, they all got neurotic and psychotic and got more suicidal because their plan wasn't an election sure in the kingdom of righteousness. Hey, they chose darkness because the light came amongst them and they comprehended it not. So they are not condemned because the Most High has shut the doors of paradise or truth or gnosis or a wisdom away from them they have cut themselves off because they have refused to accept the light and they have refused to understand or see comprehension so for me living in the end times is always about one understanding myself how i am in this experience 
how my personality is developed as my spirituality to deal with the many dysfunctions of modern society. So I have my spirituality and my faith to inform my thought processes when new things come up. Is it in moral alignment with the core principles? Well, if it is not, then I don't want it. Back in the day, when my personality wasn't so developed, what people called when I wasn't so mature, obviously I would have chose it because it was appealing. But no, not being short-term oriented only, not being medium-term oriented only, but being long-term oriented caused me to now reinforce the processes that is going to give me greater discernment to know I'm not going to make that choice because it doesn't sit in alignment with the paradigm, the foundations that I've been living by, that has been supporting me in Christ. So my faith is showing me that and then I employ it in dealing with these situations. Now, materially, I am a believer in what nature and the soil produces. And I'm also a believer in how man interprets that and makes use of it. So I, I, am, I am strong on both. Nature has to be preserved in man's ideology, not because nature needs our preservation, but man needs to be more respectful of his environment. So we threaten our place in nature and not threaten nature's place in nature, but our place. And so because of this, I'm very interested in people who present argument, products, services, things that relate back to that interest that yes we are humans we are going to build things design things experience things express things art creativity sciences you know that functionality government whatever however we must examine the ways we are doing those things so as not to jeopardize our future generation so as not to jeopardize our resources that's for one too right and if we have wrong morals, it means, let's break it down. If we have wrong morals, it means that gluttony and greed, which we call the seven deadly sins, drives the elite's identity and agenda. While when you are righteous, a more moralist and religious um, viewpoint drives your viewpoint of life. And so how you're going towards life is more rooted in morality. That means that you deal with resources different. You're not wasteful. Because the, the opposite premise is that luxury in the elite is about wealth. It's about expropriating as much resources and having the benefit of it. So if you're going to a spiritual awakening and a spiritual way of life, you wouldn't be using that manitical. So naturally resources will be more properly taken care of. Because you know that if you have generations to come. And especially if you're using um, resources that are not renewable, that means you're depleting it over the long term then that couldn't be good for, for us, right? So then I can simply use that as just a differentiating factor to know what is healthy for us and what is not healthy. Because God's system creates no waste, right? So to be harmonious, while the system of the devil creates a lot of waste. A lot, brother Singh. Yeah, man. <clears throat> and we need to pay off our loans. If we have loans, student loan, House loan, you know, mortgage, mm -hmm. car loans, loans that we just take out for do things, mm -hmm. pay off for loans, get free from debt, free yourself from all debt, pay off, pay off your credit cards, free yourself. And if you have a house that is like a five bedroom and it's you and your wife alone living it, why not sell it and buy a house in the country and you will have so much more money left behind yeah get a two-bedroom house you know rent your property if you have it enough get a house in the country leave your apartment complex and rent it and you're sure for a monthly income every month you're sure for at least a thousand US to two thousand US every month, you know, and you live in the country, living a self-sustainable life. Mm -hmm. You're sure of a monthly income, no matter what, free from debts. Mm -hmm. You know, start up some some social media platform 
to encourage others. Get the message out there, you know? Help your family get out of debt. If you have if you out of debt and you have enough, you can get your brother or your sister, you know, your son, your daughter out of debt. Absolutely. Why not help them to get free from debt? And try to teach them the better way of lifestyle, you know? A lifestyle that you don't depend on debts. Because there are benefits to debts, you know? The rich use loans. Mm -hmm. Because they basically don't use their own money. True. But they make sure they have the money and over before they take out a loan. So if they want a $10 million loan, they make sure they have $50 million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they can pay that off in any time they want. And it's no stress to them. But they will just pay that monthly mm -hmm. out of their profit. So it won't come out of their savings. So it's just an extra security for them. Mm -hmm. Because they use it. But we know normal people in the system well, with a little paycheck. Paycheck to paycheck, eh? We take out a loan now and say, all right, a $1 million loan for the house. Remember, you don't have $10 million in your account for you take out a loan of $1 million. But it is the way we have to use to get house nowadays. As a, as a somebody with a small paycheck, mm -hmm. this are, is the way, but it's a trap. True, because I leverage sometimes against your, your, they want something to put up, you know? Yes, I. As some form of um, leverage against um, which they can take the loan, you know? Yeah, man. So if you can avoid that, get a little house in the country, get a little land. If you know your, if, if, if you have some family with some farmland, why not ask them if you can build a cabin? Mm -hmm. If you can do a little, what you call them now, tiny house. Mm -hmm. Because you have a trend in tiny house, you know. True, true. People building tiny houses mm -hmm. to get out of debt. Absolutely. And to stay free from debt. Absolutely. And to live a free life, free from the Babylon system and its stress. So they start building tiny houses. So they just get out of the big house that yes. you pay the big mortgage for. And you have to put up a major collateral for when you're not, you know, yeah. in those categories. Them just sell it, get a small, get a little, what you call it, trailer or whatever them use, make the tiny homes, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, sometimes right. you have a, like an RV set up like, you know? And yeah, be, and, they build. and it's portable. Yeah, you can yeah, so take it that to now, places. Yeah, so if this spot not suitable anymore, you just move it to a next spot. Yeah, as long as you have low rental cost and like in the right facilities. I think they have got fixed tiny homes and you got the mobile ones. I think the mobile community is slightly different. Yeah, man. And um, I think there are communities now being set up to deal with them. So it's true. So I think these are trends, but every trend starts somewhere and expands to some degree true. around certain themes. And I think the tiny home theme initially started as a minimalist idea mm -hmm. which still comes back to saving um, and expenses because the minimalist idea was we live a cluttered life right? and part of my process of healing in my therapy I have the decluttering process as a part of my therapy the minimalist idea is that we live a cluttered existence and as such because we've got so much things our environment is placated with a stifling kind of energy because we can't be expansive enough to experience any of the things that we have. It's because like in relation, it's like you're sitting here and I'm sitting right here. The space right here is not that well appreciable because we are basically so close, right? But in essence, if that we had more space, right, within a tiny environment, then I could experience more of myself. Or if you had more space, then you could experience more of yourself. So the idea was to minimalize the process of one's experience, right? Bring it down because literally if you take the stuff out of the way, there is more space. And just taking the stuff out of the way, even if it's a small space, creates more space. So the minimalist idea then transposed into the off-grid community. And I think the two married together yeah, now man. is creating an idea that 
a group of people, I mean a large group of people, can be self-sustaining, whether mobile or fixed, in a more minimalized experience where they're considering their carbon footprints, the cost of um, their upkeep in terms of on the environment, and also a way in which to materially be self-sustaining. Whether they are vlogging, like we say, whether they are farming on some of these little co-op family community run oriented farm um, co-ops. So there are many different ideas which comes back to if you're really interested in going forward on a certain way of thinking like that is not material or on the grid per se. This is a nice idea, the, the tiny home movements and to some degree you got van life movement because they're divergent but mm. to some degree you have van life that have some of the similar interests in terms of saving on costs and um, also being in an environment that is not necessarily so fixed and rigid, meaning creativity is low. And when creativity is low, you don't have great ideas of yourself because we need the creatives to, to give us a concept more than what we have. Because if we are all confined in this environment, it is the artist who's gonna say to us, dream, ideate more than what is present. Mm -hmm. So all these things, I like. I like. I think that's the direction that brings more benefit. Living in the end times, right? Brother mm. Singh. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. As you say, have to cut down the costs of our usual lifestyle. You know, we don't need a ten-bedroom house where you have to hire people for come clean it because you alone can't clean it. Yeah. And it's too toxin, you know? So you're gonna need people for even cook and them thing then. No, that's not necessary. Get closer to the kitchen and make, make a farm, a little garden close to your kitchen. So you just step outside, pick your little whatever you need, you know? Your seasonings. Mm -hmm. Come back in, cook up, you know? Because what? Our original self, you know, Adam, mm -hmm. was a gardener. Mm -hmm. <laughs> original man, mm -hmm. gardener, a caretaker. Yes, hallelujah. They have to take care of the garden. Yes. So the more we get closer to that lifestyle, and the more we get closer to original self. Hallelujah. Because anything other than that, is of Babylon. God never make way for do certain things like sit down around decks all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> it make us go outside, you know, pick fruits, walk, run, swim, swim, you know, yeah. yeah. So even that now, if we can even get a land that has a river on it, mm -hmm. a spring, a creek, mm -hmm. running water. Fresh water. Or even water. a well. Ah. You know? That are the best land to get. Mm -hmm. Because if you have your own water, you know, mm -hmm. there's a wind right there. Win win. Yeah? You have water for your house. Hallelujah. Water for the farm. Mm -hmm. Unlimited. Water for the animals, oh my god. But if you don't have water, just have containers, tanks mm -hmm. that pour from your rooftop. So build up gutters that send rainwater into the tanks, filtered, you know, mm -hmm. and you will have pure rainwater. I think that's a lot more healthy too, considering the amount of chemicals they put in just common drinking water and how much cycles it has to go through before it's portable for the body. True. Yeah, man, because you have filtration system, you know. Like before it enters through your pipe, mm -hmm. it goes through three filters. Mm -hmm. So any little debris, you know, mm -hmm. it catch that before it come in. So it's still pure, yes. it's cleaner. Yes, yes. Because any little leaf and stem or anything will get into the system mm -hmm. that will get strained out, mm -hmm. filtered out, you know, and get solar panels. Yes. So we now have to pay light bills because what now? Light bills going up, current mm -hmm. bill going up, electric bill going up. Fuel charge, eh? Be yes, the oil going up. So the two of them go up together. Mm -hmm. So we need to use the sunlight 
We have so much sunlight mm -hmm. in many parts of the world. Mm -hmm. It's a we natural can thing, right? We can utilize it. And we can even get paid by it. Mm -hmm. Because you have people that send back power into the grid. True that. And they get back money into their pockets. The electric companies mm -hmm. pay them money mm -hmm. because they add power to the grid. Mm -hmm. It's a power supply to the grid. Independent power supply. Yes, I. And even windmills. Yeah. A whole heap of breeze are blow. Yes, you, you have some home and family oriented windmill that can generate maybe a 6 to watt. And, you know, and a 12 volt converter system with the, with the solar usually can, you know, get a um, abnormal family life done depending on what corridor you're in in the continental United States and the Caribbean and the Americas. But one of the things I, I recognize is that um, wind farm energy is being sold um, to cities um, from these mass companies. But wind turbine technology exists also in small scale, but it's more promoted on the industrial scale. But you can have sm small scale wind turbine at home and such. And so renewable sources of energy, um, you can have a water turbine a uh, water wheel which can yeah. be non-intrusive to the environment it's like if you have a river or a yeah, man. Going through the moving property water. Yeah, man. and so you can generate electricity that way and so there, there are many other things and there are individuals who are also aware of the law of thermal dynamics and, and energy and such and can build their own technology my, my own advice to such individuals please do not try to make a commercial project or product out of it because the commercial industry sets things on a fossil fuel based way. And when things are set that way, when you go contrary to that with new renewables in such a high, um, the simplistic way, it threatens the, <laughs> the core economic um, potential of these big guys. So it is good if you should find that you are gifted with that technology, use it for the benefit of yourself and your community like wind renewable energy of a higher refracting level, light energy at a higher refracting level, um, thermal dynamic in terms of heat at a higher refracting level, all of these things, you understand me? Creating um, negative energy um, you know, machines from suction as another um, thing versus from propulsion, which we always do all the time. So there's certain things that if you're doing these things, you're smart enough, you're brilliant enough, you know that the earth is going towards a certain cycle within the sun age and within certain environmental things right so you know where we're going right and the essence of it is that if you're smart and you can add to some of the good things of the fossil fuel technology i wouldn't say because we talk about it all the time we talk about hybrid technology that is gas electric right like plasma <laughs> you know um maybe plasma can be harvested from more than just welding which is a gas electric idea right so we have the hybrid cars right so it's not like there isn't some kind of gas electric hybrid out there but in terms of how it works in terms of technical and we we could have better technology out of that but be that as it may i'm saying that this is a future where we're not just saying fossil fuel are the fossilized experience of burning these fuels right petroleum Right? And then from that to the surveillance economy of everything being digital and all our moves being watched, the credit score economy and all of that, right? which is a kind of a socio-fascist kind of you know, economic structure right there. But beyond all of that, which is we know is Babylon, which is the anti-God, the antithesis, the anti-Christ, there is a God gift here. Study about the seasons, go read back some book I teach you about nature, right? the herbs, how each herb connects to a bodily organ. Learn about the reflexology of the energy points in the body. The 108 energy points that can circulate healing on a neuropathic, not neutropathic way. Or even go to some neutropathic healing, right? Which is based upon the, what you consume. Come off the systematic grid. Focus on the divergence of natural ways. It's there. That's, that's the way I think is the survival modus operandi for these end times. Because anything that can be hooked up, plugged in, simulated, projected, mm -hmm. is going to be under trouble. True. And anything that is modified, adjusted, transhumanic, or any such things, is going to be in trouble. Hallelujah. Right, because 
Some might not want to hear this. Depart from me, I know you not. Some might not want to hear that. But some will hear that. Hallelujah. A lot will hear that. You know why? Because they rather mock and jeer. That's what my friends usually say back in the day. You know? People mock and jeer. They see you speaking truth. They see you trotting in the direction of truth. But because they cannot come to grips with truth in themselves. It's not just about you, you know. It's not because you are doing it. It's because they can't come to grips with truth within themselves. The only thing they can do is mock and jeer. But the disaster, yeah, it's swinging over, hallelujah, their head. Brother Sin. Yeah, man, and as you say, we need to get some manual tools. We can just depend on electric tools and equipment. So if you have an electric drill, did you know they had a manual drills? <laughs> yeah, man. Handheld. <laughs> yeah, man. Because, as you said, for real, if the electric not working, what are you going to do? So, mash it. If you don't, if you just have a lawnmower, why not get a mash it as well? Mm -hmm. You know? Get certain things that manual. You ever see the old time thing that I used to cut the lawn? It's like a sickle. Yeah, 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 man. man that's such good. Yeah, man. And movement good for the body. Of course, man. So, even if, if we use these tools, even if we still have electricity, still use the manual tools more. Because you still get a whole heap of movement in the body. Flex yourself, you know. Because usually you know, just the inside and the couch. Yes. So, if you get to go outside, get for work and do things and don't just depend on electric tools or make the work easy. Go to the old time digital. The old time digital is called analog, you know. Because you had to do some manual stuff with that stuff, right? True. And now you got the digital now, so you got the console, which is in your hands now, right? And back in the day, you had to console yourself with what you could do with your hands. You had to use them to survive. Male and females had to use their hands and ingenuity, but it translated through the hands. That's why we have manual. And, and it's something that people don't consider, my brother, saying that when you get an equipment, when you buy a new piece of equipment, a vehicle, anything, a machine, you get a manual. True. And what is manual? Right? So there was a time when it literally, it's a function of the thing, it's how it operates, how to operate it. And manual comes back to man. Right? That's where manual comes from, that you have to do it yourself. That all forms of automation and electrification were once done by the power of man. Man power. That's what my teacher tells me you now, man power. And he says, if you want to talk about maintenance of a proper society, how could there not be a ministry of man power? My teacher is very serious about this and he's not joking. He says, how can you talk about a society of any value that should be maintained and you do not have a ministry of man power? That's very important because you see manpower, the ingenuity that comes from the people who run those electric lines, who do the engineering, who build those dams, that's manpower. And the strength, not just of theory, but of putting it into actuality is diminished because people love to talk about the engineer and love to talk about the designer. But the guys who put in the man hours have no respect given to them. And that's where we talk about manual labor. Right? Because they make it seem like the, the work that brings it together, the laborious work, is not of value because they designed the system to abstract value from your efforts. And we accept that for a few diamonds, a few shillings. While if we would organize around the collective ideas without the selfishness that is separated by the class and the creed, then we would get along. We would get along. We would know that it's not money or any material value that expropriates the earth resources. It's the human that does it. You can say your motivation for doing it is this and that. However, why did we do it before this was the motivation? How did we do it before this was the motivation? So to substantiate a materialist idea as your motivation for being the way you are is not good enough. It's not good enough. We once built great cities and civilization, not just in the European ilk that exploited labor and slave labor, where it was collective, and there are records of many such societies and many such cities, but they are not being told unless you do some emeritus study or some um, PhD study, to be honest. 
So we're not getting truthful, good, viable information about the functionality and design of society. But be that as it may, gird yourself around with the belt of righteousness, right? With the best plate, with the best plate and the shield of righteousness, with the helmet of salvation, with the sword of the word, with the shield of faith, yeah? with the shoes of readiness. You understand? Guard yourself with the word of God till you are so wholly imbued in it that you see the path opening before you and you know how to survive in these in times. So until next time, this has been The Great Owl in the presence of my co-host, Brother Raman Singh. Just reminding you, let's be wise and humble. Choose wisely in these end times. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love.